about the instrument that you're holding. I, I heard it had quite a challenge a little ways ago. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. This violin has been stolen and returned to me. It was stolen in Hawaii. I went there to play for a children's benefit, and I normally wouldn't take this instrument, and for some reason, it is my best fiddle, and it's uh, made by a German maker who was once in Santa Barbara in California. His name is Fred Meissner, and he made this violin for himself, and he just happened to uh, have it there when I came through there to visit. And I just wa I, I went in there just to get some repairs done on an instrument and walked out with another violin, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I actually did take a risk and put a pickup on this instrument, which was like, that was really a no-no by uh, um, cer certain standards to some. But I just decided to do it and just use it for my jazz gigs as well. I mean, why, why else would I just leave it sitting there? And you see it has a little flower here, yes. that, that inlay. I always like that about it. I did some customized things uh, to this instrument over time. So I took it to Hawaii to play for this benefit for children um, while I was there. And the band that I was there with, a couple of them, we were kind of at their mercy because they were driving. And we were actually on our way to the airport. It was our last day there. I was there with my daughter. And they wanted to stop at this remote beach area. And so they were like, uh, well, we're not going to stay that long. I'm like, well, you know, we can't stay at all because I, I don't want to leave my instrument in the car. And like, I promise you, we won't be that long, maybe 30 minutes at best. Then we came back and lo and behold, somebody took a boulder, busted out the window of the rental car and stole this fiddle. Oh, no. And I called the police. Um, they were very good about getting the word out about it. And they immediately put all kinds of, of uh, APBs out there that, that would stop it from going through the airport or from leaving the island in any way at all. And uh, I think it took, let's see, that took place around the Thanksgiving holiday. And by January into the next year, I got a message on my MySpace page saying, Happy New Year, I found your violin. Wow. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Because they couldn't go anywhere with it, so they and it was a hot item, so they had to off it. And I had too much information documented about it, and fortunately that it was an island. They really couldn't go anywhere with it, and because of the type of event that I did, the media there was very supportive about getting the word out about the instrument, and mm -hmm. someone heard about it, and they let me know, and I did get it back. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, God bless the person that got it back to you. Yes, absolutely. Oh, now we have to talk about your days with Soul to Soul because that was also... That was my time. first major tour. It really was. They had a, a large impact on me. I was part of a three-fiddle violin section that danced and moved at the same time. What was cool about that was everything I did in salsa prepared me to do a gig like that because in salsa, you know, the, the dance steps are much more complicated than what I was doing with Soul to Soul. So that was like a cinch to me. And a lot of violinists can't dance and play at the same time. I just wanted to be regarded and respected first as a musician. And I can't even lay, name all of them, but so many of the people that I, that I grew up listening to, I have actually had an opportunity to work with since uh, being out here in Los Angeles. And I'd like to do more of that sort of thing. I'd like to work with Michelle and Deggie Cello. Um, I'd like to work with the symphonic orchestra. I'd like to continue to develop the concept of my current CD, which is called Soul Kestrel yes. Groove. And uh, so I would like to have this Soul Kestra which would be a, a full-blown string section with uh, arrangements based upon the material on that project. Mm -hmm. um, you wrote um, and produced this project. Well, I had a partner in the production on name, by the name of Andre Manga, and, uh, and, and a lot of great talent um, as far as musicianship participated on this project. Um, some are up and coming, some have been around a long time, but always been great side musicians. Uh, who, who have who, their band leaders in their own right. When Youngle Jackson is on here, who, when I first met him, he was playing with Miles Davis. I was like, wow, percussionist. Um, Brandon Coleman did a lot of nice arrangements, arrangements on a couple of the songs. I have covers. I cover a lot of styles that, because uh, I have kind of different groups of people that know me for different styles of music, the gospel um, uh, versus the jazz versus the R&B. So I felt obliged to put some kind of R&B kind of material. And these are um, songs that where they, if they were original, they were felt, uh, heartfelt, 
um, interpretations. So talk about some of the things that, that you feel. What, what, what's the range of Some songs that I've written are influenced by what's going on in an event in my life. Uh, but then there are other times when it's, you know, it's just the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, with this instrument, you can produce a nice range uh, from uh, humor to sadness to melancholy to, oh gosh, you, you can make it sound happy. Um, you know, very vocal like instrument violin is because we have no frets. We don't have frets, we don't have keys. Uh, and, and actually, it's very hard to MIDI an instrument like this because of all the semitones, because of the way you can slide around on it. So that causes you to have a range of emotions that you can express in ways that you can't on other instruments. Yes. Uh, the title song is an original. And then I did put a couple of covers out there for those who just needed to hear something that they could hum to and already knew. So far, all of the uh, responses I've gotten to it were very, very nice. The reviews that I've gotten for it have been very nice and favorable. So let's talk about some of the other things that you want to do musically. Uh, I want to do um, a live performance video, a Karen Briggs live performance video. I somehow need to prove that I have enough impact that if I did something like that and if it was promoted well, that, that it would do well. And I have some ideas about what I would like to do. And of course, I'd like to keep recording. I've always enjoyed live performances and working with uh, various musicians. I've been blessed to work with a lot of musicians that uh, I grew up listening to, who I've always admired, the Stanley Clarks, the George Dukes, Patrice Russian, uh, <laughs> you know, just so many, Ali Ali Woods and vocalists. Uh, I think what I've tried to do is to include my instrument in its in all of its traditional glory, but to and include it in all of the contemporary music styles that I possibly could. I think if I were a drummer or a bass player, I'd have a harder time as a, as a woman trying to be a musician. And being a mother and a musician, yes. that I think is what really sets us apart because unlike my male colleagues, I cannot leave my child with her mother. Well, I would just say that um, to the audience, whatever the venue, wherever the time, the place, if you have a chance to see Karen Briggs live, please do it. Uh, she'll make you cry. She'll make you jump to your feet and cheer and go, say, go on, girl. Mm -hmm. She is an amazing musician, and we're so happy. It's been a tremendous honor to have you here on ladiesbehindthebeat.tv, and we will see you down the road. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.